Oké, okay, shalom, shalom. Kom je ze alle. Kogel je me laat je houden, baas je me houden. Shai, baas je me gaan gaan goedas. Dat we honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone, who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to take the water to all the Aki and Menachwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, baas je me houden. Shai to the best of their ability. This is Shah Hanan Nawaf just coming at you with another quick lesson. I'm praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And I uh, wanted to touch on this redacted um, show where this, uh, you know, they had um, this pilot on, right? That, uh, you know, he took them things, he rolled them sleeves up, took the thing thing, and, you know, it, you know it, it fucked him up. So, you know, of course he can't fly anymore, but they was kind of talking about how there's basically pilots out here that's actually flying, you know, uh, with that thing. And the same thing that happened to him could happen to them. Cause it just hit him while he was at the crib And um you know he had to go to the hospital Whatever whatever He had to regain his you know how to walk again And all kinds of silly shit So I'm not gonna you know go too hard about it This is not medical information It's just um, a story And I don't know how they get away with you know the type of uh, shit they be putting on On the tube Because when we talk to man I, I lost like I don't even know I lost maybe like Fucking 10 channels man Around the time that this came out And we was reporting on it like 10 channels man <laughs> within like a year you know two years or so you know what i'm saying so and 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 not long ago i got a strike you know on some shit so now you know here here we go all of a sudden they're kind of speaking on this thing and they know the troops of it but still they won't allow us the men of the lord you know to speak on it from the bible level they will let everybody else kind of talk they shit or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to us, they want to, you know, throw them strikes at us and, uh, you know, take down our channels. But anyway, this is for educational purposes only. I just want to play a little bit of um, what this guy is saying. And, um, you know, hey, just a quick little reminder, hey, man, don't, you know, never trust thine enemy. This is what we were saying all along, man, you know. And you had some camps that was out here teaching that. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? There's a few camps. I I S U P K. I remember them. Uh, uh, I U I C. I think they. I, you know, supposedly I'm not sure what they really passed away from, so to speak. But supposedly, like 20 or so of their members ended up, you know, um, being deleted. I do remember seeing the um the, the lady. She was she was like a nurse or something. She wanted to keep her job, and uh, she was asking um the bishop Nathaniel from I U I C. You know, should she you know do that thing you know and he pretty much was <laughs> you know he, he recommended it to her that you know pretty much yeah you know he didn't tell her a direct no like no he he should have been like look no nah, fuck that man go get another job somewhere else you know like how the apostles was telling us and none of us took that shit and i know when i was at the you know the matter of fact at the plantation i went today you know and, and the people that i don't even hang around them Unless I really have to like deal with them I can go like a couple of weeks <laughs> And they won't even see me Because you know we kind of have two separate type of um, assignments So if I have to help them out That's the only time I see them Which is rare But they took that shit And I know the one chick she was like They made me do it I'm like no What the fuck they didn't You know and I'm telling her I didn't take it Wow how did you not take it I'm like shit I put in for a religious exemption <laughs> I still got that shit right now too in my email where I shot it through. You know they put me through a couple of little things, you know. And then man, I say I pray to Yahweh about Shemel Shai. Um, I filled out the paperwork as far as you know, and it was like a PDF file or whatever. You know they're doing everything electronically now, which that's what they're gonna pretty much land all this shit on anyway. Some some fucking digital implants in your ass, but you know all everything was sent through PDF file type of deal. And, and I, you know, I put down the scriptures, I let them know, you know, certain things, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, why I couldn't take the shit. And it was up in the air from there, you know, because I prayed to the Lord. I'm like, well, if the Lord want me to have this job, I'm going to get it. I mean, I'm going to have it. And if not, fuck them. I'm going to leave. I'm not taking, you know, I'm not doing none of that shit, man. You know? So, let's play a little bit of the video. Matter of fact, let's grab the scripture real quick. And then we'll play some of the video. Let's get this one in the apocrypha real fast. going to be a quick one. I kind of on my side and I plug my phone up. Only had 
eight percent. So I'm I'm good right now. I'm good right now. All right, but uh, let's get uh, we already in there. Ecclesiastes twelve and ten, and it reads, "Never trust thine enemy, for like his iron rusted, so is his wickedness." And the problem with Jake, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, is you think that these these so-called white people are your friends, and they're not. Cause guess what? Who who did they who did they push that on first? Who did they push it on first? Who did they they? As a matter of fact, it goes on to say, though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. So this is the, a direct commandment from the Lord, saying, "Hey, look, uh, look both ways before you cross the street." <laughs> you know, so to speak. That's a that's a commandment from the Lord to watch your enemies, because they will humble themselves and go crouching. And what was they doing? They was offering Jake all kinds of damn incentives. You know, you can get a free Big Mac meal. You can get a free, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Dunkin' Donuts and fucking Krispy Kremes. I remember them. Uh, uh, all the uh, cannabis shops was offering free, um, a free gram or a free, you know, joint or some bullshit. You know, they was offering free um NBA tickets. You know, all kinds of stuff. I remember that, man. And people was going for it. You know, with the little sticker on their shirt, like how they done when they went to vote. I voted. And they had the little stickers there. <laughs> you know, a little sticker on their shirt and shit. They're like, yeah, I got mine. You know, type of deal. But they was offering it to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans first. Because they were saying what? You were more proportionately capable, basically, of catching that thing thing. You, out of all people, right? And see, Jake really didn't go for it like that, you know, because, you know, they started coming back with the, you know, we don't trust, you know, um, you know, remember what happened with, you know, um, the, I think the uh, Tuskegee um, experiments and shit like that. And Jake was skeptical, especially this younger generation. A lot of the older generation, they went out there and they, they, they just went on and just done what Master said. But a lot of the, the younger generation, they didn't, but a lot of Jake went out and took that shit to keep them jobs, man. And you just had a lady, she just won, I think, damn near $13 million. Because she did, she got fired. I think she was a, um, uh, she worked at a Catholic church or something like that. And because of her so-called religious beliefs, you know, they ended up firing her. But she won $13 million. Something like that. 12, low over $12 million. Anyway, though, let's finish this up. Verse 11. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped the looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust had not been altogether wiped away. Which means that hey, he's going to eventually show you them horns, man. That's Esau in a nutshell, man. He's he going to show you. It never fails, too. And being in this true, I'm, I've been seeing it more and more, man. You know, And it builds your faith because you actually see the scriptures coming to pass, man. You can tell hey, Esau don't have his own people. He don't have his own people's... um best interest in mind man so you know he's not thinking about you so-called blacks hispanics and native americans look at how they go to the african continents over there and they be dealing with them hamites them so-called uh, uh uh you know the, the darker people that's over there which are so-called you know africans and we're not africans we're different um race of people but they try and lump us all up in this lump sum or we the whole continent of fucking africa you see but he was a hey, he was out here he's trying to push that shit on us man and a lot of Jake went for it because why? They didn't want to lose those little plant jobs, you know, little $30, $40 an hour jobs, $25, you know. You know, I got babies to take care of. My kids got to eat. Instead of having faith in Yahweh about Shimei was shy. Because the scripture says to trust in the Lord, man. Don't lean to your own understanding. You know, the Lord said, my servant shall eat. And that's what we're, we're relying on. And I'm going to kick back on, you know what I'm saying, that Isaiah 33 and 6. You have to, you know, really, you know, um, um, really remember that the Lord is going to, you know, do what he said he's going to do. And, and that's the problem with our people. They don't believe in the Lord. They don't believe in his words. They don't believe that everything that he says is going to come to pass. They don't get it. But anyway, let's play a little bit of the video. I might, I'm going to jump a little bit here and there. But I just want you to just see this guy, man. You know, he trusted in that bullshit. And now. He's basically out here just, you know, getting this little disability check or whatever, or um, whatever he's, you know, it, his wife had to quit her job to take care of his ass. They had to move. 
out of their regular home, you know what I'm saying, to go somewhere cheaper. See? So he he he's he's run, he's giving a rundown. I'm not gonna go through it all, but this is redacted. You can go through it and check it out yourself. As you can see the title here, they forced this pilot to take, you know what? And it ruined his um, you know, it it ruined his career. He he he's done. You know, because you you can't he's he's not balanced. You have to learn how to walk. Oh, you know all kinds of shit. Like, you ain't about to let you fly no no plane like that. But basically what he's saying is there are other pilots that's out here flying that took that thing thing. And these motherfuckers could crash a damn plane. <laughs> on your way. And you know a lot of people about to get out here and get to flying on them, you know, for these holidays, man. So, you know, even a warning with that. You Jake, man, y'all going and y'all celebrating these holidays and you popping up at Big Mama in them house for some goddamn turkey and ham. And you just never know, man. The Lord might judge your ass a, a whole plane full of you. But anyway, let's play a little bit. One of the greatest cover-ups in modern American history is what is happening to our pilots. Those pilots who take us safely from point A to point B, our commercial pilots, and our military pilots who protect our country because of vaccine mandates. The enormous amount of vaccine injuries is being covered up. It's being hidden mandates that were put in place by commercial airlines has been absolutely devastating. We here at Redacted have heard from many, many pilots who've told us that they are the recipient of vaccines and vaccine injuries, which has grounded them and their ability to fly. And joining me now is one of those individuals, Tim McAdams, uh, who flew for Airbus uh, in their helicopter division, flying commercially in their helicopter division following a vaccine mandate put in place by airbus uh, a mandate that he didn't want to comply with in order to take this vaccine ended up with a vaccine injury that has grounded him for three years tim is just one of many voices in america and i believe one of the greatest cover-ups in america right now tim joins us now tim great to see you and thank you for joining us here on redacted well thank you clean for having me and thank you for your bravery, by the way. Um, you know, I put out a call on uh, social media asking for pilots who were brave uh, who to come forward who had suffered vaccine injuries. And uh, that's how we were able to connect. Um, why don't you take me back and just and give our audience your story here and how this all unfolded for you at Airbus. So what happened was, I guess it was early 2020. I was traveling back and forth to Europe for work and getting tested, going into the United States, coming out of the United States. And um, I was a very healthy Test, individual. Tested for COVID. Tested for yes. COVID. And I was a very healthy individual. I worked out five, six times a week, watched what I ate, did not drink, didn't smoke. And so to me, I was just taking reasonable precautions and didn't want or think I would need the vaccine. It wasn't until Airbus mandated it or get fired, which I, I found out from a guy, Captain uh, Saliba, I think is who you've interviewed before, um, that that is against the law, specifically 91 Point one one, which prohibits people from interfering with crew members and then any crew member, including pilots, um, or intimidating them, which is what Airbus did. And so I reluctantly took the vaccine because I didn't want to lose my job. And then look at the difference in this guy, man. Like, look, they sure they, they sure they got the guy that he's working out five to six times a week. You know, looking pretty, you know, pretty in shape. He goes from that to what you see in him talking like now, man. That shit is crazy, bro. Three weeks later, I had two very rare cerebe cerebellum strokes. I ended up in the hospital for 80 days. Um, and then I had to go to rehab to learn how to walk, swallow, talk, and so on. Um, and then after, it's funny, because then after... I was released from that. Um, I caught COVID for the first time. 
So I got COVID at home, and and it's been a slow recovery now. I'll never be able to fly again, but um, it's been three years, and I'm slowly, slowly getting some some of my functions back. Um, My biggest issue right now is balance. Ever seen a military monocular lens? It's lucky for that, but you get the point, you know. (laughs) You get the point. And there's a lot of people. Look at all those people that you know what I'm saying. Hey, a lot of uh, youngsters on the basketball court, tennis court, fucking, you know, whatever court. Best shape of their lives, man. Just just dropping. And again, you know, this is not medical information. You know what I'm saying? But let's get um, another one. Because basically. The reason why he done it was for his livelihood. That's how Esau came at him, you know, with that mandate. And they're going to do the same thing with this right here. And this is why the apostles have been going off into this all this week. And being, I mean, it's every other week. I mean, you know, strong, strong coming from GMS, you know what I'm saying? Um, Great Millstone. They're going into this strong as far as this is this is a major prophecy that's going to come to pass. And a lot of people are going to fall for it because they're going to mandate it. And they're going to mandate it through your livelihood. They're going to basically say, well, hey, you want to eat? You want to you want to drink? You want to pay your bills? You want to continue living life? You're going to have to come through and you're going to have to, you know, take this other thing thing. So they got all the data. You know, and it's kind of surprising that, you know, um, Trump being elected and he wasn't he was talking as if he wasn't with all this digital shit before. Now, all of a sudden, he's with all this digital shit. He's with the cryptocurrency now. He's with the CBDC shit now. He's with, of course, he 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 has brought in Elon Musk and made up a whole nother department for that clown, man. And you know what he's into? He's into, you know, um that that neuro, that neuro, that that link. <laughs> so hey, this man could very well bring this this thing into fruition within his his first fucking month of being in the office, man. You just never know. Uh, but, um, Romans, oh, so like you, Re- Revelations 13, so like you, and 16, and I want to get verse 17 as well, let's put a highlight on those, it says, and he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And that's going off into that implant, man. That micro implant into people. The new digital currency. Because people are already accustomed to using their, especially this newer generation. They're in, they're more accustomed to using their phones to tap and pay and pay for shit. You know, um, Cash App, Zelle, uh, uh, all, you know, all these different um, digital pay platforms or whatever that you can use or whatever. Now, you know, older people, they still kind of whipping. They'll whip out some cash on you. You know what I'm saying? Pay for their little... Uh, products whatever when they at the store whatever but overall this newer generation and and i you know me speaking as a man (laughs) i think they they, you know they was pretty much kind of trying to knock off a lot of them older people man with that shit because a lot of those older people see matter of fact they was promoting it to them as well they were the one matter of fact right now still right now in this season that's coming up right now you know with the you know they call it the it's a few different um jump, you know, jump shots they want you to get. All of them at one time, too. And that one girl that ended up um she she took some um she just needed it was a surgery that she needed, but they told her she needed these jump shots beforehand and it had her ass out here looking like the wicked witch of the east, man. You know, her face and shit was all red and bruised up and she was looking all just she went from being a a, a uh, uh, actually a very attractive lady to looking like a goddamn monster man right so it's very important to know to not trust this man when he comes with that next move because we was believing that that was a, that was a test that was the tester to see who was going to comply who wasn't going to comply they got all the data you know everybody was typing shit everybody was typing their life away everybody was doing little tiktoks and um you know um you know just on all these social media platforms and so they know your mindset. They know your thoughts. They probably, you know, was 
putting a damn red checker flag on every every damn post you posted up and they know the people that's with it and not but they're gonna use your livelihood to actually have you come through and comply man and that's where you know let's get um as i quoted this one and this is very serious man isaiah 33 and 6 and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation the fear of the lord is his treasure so this wisdom this knowledge is going to be the stability of our times man these words of yahweh because he said to trust on him that's exactly what i done when i done my little exemption i put it in and you know i left it in the lord's hand i was fully confident too matter of fact you know people was calling me about you know what scriptures could they use how, and, and these was niggas that didn't want even into the bible like that really you know what i'm saying like they knew what was up because i had been telling them before and then when everything jumped off and all of a sudden you you need a way to try and keep your job they didn't want to take it because they believed what i was telling them but they didn't really believe believe in the scriptures man and that's how a lot of people gonna be they're just gonna cave man so we want this wisdom and its knowledge to be the stability of our times not the results as far as like the other people because you know my mom i remember her calling me about my sisters you know what i'm saying and this 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 and this you know how can i get a um you know send me some scriptures where i can try and do one too this i sent it but now whether or not it worked out for them i never even find out because i ain't even want to know like that you know what i'm saying but you know overall that's when jake start to get to paying attention when shit gets serious so when things get to flying down the pipe because jake no it's not like people don't know about this um you know this motb that's to come they know about it they know about it but when it really comes that's when they're gonna be like up oh, for real up oh, with there. see right now they just uh whatever you niggas you know whatever y'all need to just you know y'all need to all you do is read that bible all right we're gonna see man well now this is revelations 14 and 9 And the third angel followed them, saying, let me put a little highlight on that, too. And the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on their forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, Yahweh. That's the true name of the father, Yahweh, which means he exists or the existing one. And the true name of his son is Yahweh Shai, which means he's the savior or deliverer in the Paleo-Hebrew. It says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And you know, when you drinking, you know, some people like to put a little something in a, in a you know, in a drink, you know, to kind of calm the drink down. You know, they don't want to take that straight, straight shot that, 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 uh, that hit you in the chest shot. They want to, you know, add a little juice to it, a little Coca-Cola, whatever the fuck, you know, a little whatever. No, you this right here saying you you know it's gonna be without mixture. You gonna you gonna take that shot. You gonna you gonna you gonna you know <laughs> you gonna you gonna drink it this cup, man. It says which is poured out without mixture. Let's start it from the top again. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, with, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. And in the presence of the Lamb, which are going to be totally destroyed, basically. That's it. You're either going to, you know, leave this planet like how some of these people have that took that shit, or, and that was actually, I would have to say, somewhat of some mercy. But if your ass is still here, or you're going to, oh, yeah, you, you know, you're going to most definitely catch the missiles, man. You're going, you're going to die in that, in that, in that nuclear fire. And all these countries been talking about right now because they're having little summits right now before, you know, Trump comes into office, all these little different, they're doing military um, drills and all this little shit. And basically all these countries are focused on nuclear might, getting their nuclear arsenal up. Why do you think they're doing that? The Lord has actually um, got them doing that, actually, because America is going to be torched. Now, this is Revelation 16 and 2. Put a highlight on that one, too. It says, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, 
And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship his image. And I'm bringing out these scriptures because this man, when he done what he done, he done it because of his livelihood. He straight said it. He was like, shit, he, you know, he needed to work. He needed the money. He needed to survive. And you can see how clearly, you can clearly see, man, this is uh, two totally different people. This guy shouldn't be looking like that. Nobody transitions like that within two years, man, three years. Not like that. Not if you're working out five, six um, times a week. You know what I'm saying? You don't smoke. You don't drink. You see what they had to do to this guy? Matter of fact, let's continue. Let's, let's play it. Let's play it again. Let's see here. Ever seen a military monocular Sloppy. lens that can zoom in on objects miles away? You're about to. Lucky. There you go. So I can lose my balance if I turn my head too fast, or about once a day. It just I just get dizzy, and uh, so I'm I'm working on that right now. So two cerebellum strokes that left you paralyzed. You were in bed, unable to walk. Two cerebellum strokes, bro. A lot of people was having some some you know some difficulties, man. Those stories is coming out, but guess what? They was they were scrubbing them bitches. They was trying to keep them bitches off the line. And still to this day, you know what I'm saying? They still go hard about it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm trying to do this video the way that I'm doing it. And again, this is not medical information. You know, I'm just I'm playing a video <laughs> and, and, and and reacting to it, so to speak, you know. But nah man, hey, we're not to um trust our enemies, man. We're not to trust our enemies. Because if you if you go with, along with this man, you're going to be going against the Lord. It's that simple. So you're going to have to make a choice. And we're definitely in the last of days, man. You know, it, it's so much information that's coming out right now that, um, you know, the, where the Lord talked about wars, rumors of wars. Because the disciples asked the Lord what would be happening in the end days. He gave a whole rundown. Matter of fact, let's just go to that real quick. And these things are happening <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. That's how we know the scriptures are real. Okay, Matthew um, 24. Let me get all these. I'm a, I need to throw a little highlight on this baby. Bear with me real quick here. Okay, so this is um, verse 3, Matthew 24 and 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And it's not talking about the end of the planet. The whole damn planet is not about to blow up, man. You know, this is talking about the end of an age, the end of a society, the end of a kingdom, which is Esau Edom. This is his kingdom, the so-called white man. He's the one that's pushing all these wars. He's the one that's, you know, he's got his FBI, FDAs, and CIAs, and all these goddamn alphabets running throughout the earth and they're just running through shit and they're, you know, you know, just running the people, the elite of them anyway. You know, they're just, you know, telling the whole earth what to do and, and people have to comply through this man's laws. Right. So verse four, it says, how is I answer and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. So that's a commandment from the Lord. Don't let nobody deceive you and fool you into thinking any of this shit is right. You better be believing on Yahweh by Shem Shai. He says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the, the, the anointed one, or Christ, they say. We say Mashiach, the anointed one, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars, rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That's all you're hearing on TV is wars, rumors of wars. Now, with Trump becoming the new thing, all these countries are trying to align their self. You know, they're just trying to, you know... They're making moves. They're making adjustments because they know this motherfucker is uh, unpredictable as hell. They don't know what he's really going to do when he comes in there. All they can, all they know is the talks that he, you know, then said as far as like, you know, all these little places he's been traveling about while getting damn shot at and all this other shit. And, you know, and they're analyzing things from that standpoint. But they really don't know what this man is going to do. So they're pretty much just like, oh, well, we'll wait. You know, we, we won't have no choice, but they're making adjustments in all these countries. Or what are they doing? Spending money on military war, on, on military might. 
You're spending money on, you know, new um, nuclear capability. They ain't talking about regular um, shit. All these countries are investing into new nuclear shit, man. That's what they're talking about. So we're talking about nuclear um, um, fervent heat, man. It's going to come to this place, man. Right? So verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So these things are happening. And one thing also that the Lord spoke of right here in verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's the reason why you're seeing all these cold-blooded ass, and people don't even care no more. People be listening to stories and be like, you know, oh, damn, that's fucked up, and they'll keep moving. It don't even hit them in, in, in a mindset or in a, you know, in a lob or their heart that, damn, that's really, you know, like, it, you know, it brings a, a real true sadness to them. It don't. They kind of giggle at the shit and keep moving. Kids being um, murked and knocked off and deleted and, um, you know, uh, they don't care, man. Old people, you know, it's just, you know, the love of many is waxing cold. People getting, you know, done up by their own family members within their households who they're supposed to trust in a cold ass way. It's people being dismembered. You never heard of so many people being dismembered. You know, motherfuckers is dismembering mothers and, you know, and throwing them on barbecue grills, really cooking them, literally. These are stories, man. So these are things that the Lord spoke of. And then also, when you go into 2 Timothy, so this is how close we know we are, man, to the Lord's coming. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Let me start. Let me get this too. It says, This know also that the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And, and this is your average person that you run across all day long. They got some of these, all, all the people that you come across on a day-to-day -day basis, all day long, they got at least four to five of these traits. Possibly even all of them. And that's from your children, your women, your grandmothers. Nobody really cares, man. It's that 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 without natural affection, man. Traitors, heady, high-minded. They're unthankful. They're disobedient to parents. You can't tell me we're not living in these times. It says in verse one, this no also. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. And you're about to start to see some real great afflictions out here too, man. And we'll see if Trump is actually going to make it to inauguration. Who knows? They might knock that nigga off. Who gives a shit? But anyway, we'll see. We don't know the actual detailed details. But we know that the Lord has given us a time stamp or time period where he's given us a, 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 you know, a measuring stick to basically know what's about to jump off or what's about to pop and you can actually get that and um i went into this earlier today uh second address chapter nine because he said to measure the times diligently you you measure the times through this through the scriptures and um what you see going on around you second address nine and one he answered me then and said measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And he's visiting this world, man, through a lot of um, channels, man. You know, a lot of spirits of vengeance are out here because he created spirits for vengeance, according to, um, you know, Sirach uh, or Ecclesiasticus 39 and 28. All those spirits of vengeance. That's why you're starting to see people um get that business or getting deleted in the worst ways out here that's a way that he's visiting this earth too it says therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning so the lord is visiting this place man and he's sending out the warnings to our people and if you don't take heed hey, it's gonna be all on you because you're not going to have a cloak because the scriptures is coming out. 
Romans 13 and 11 and verse 12. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation near than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So this is the time period that we're in. You notice it just keeps saying, talking about time. Measure thou the time diligently. In the end days, perilous time shall come. You know, it said, uh, and that knowing the time, because we can see the times, man. This place is getting rough. It's getting rougher and rougher by the day, man. And the Lord is not holding them up. And now what's about to start happening is um, these these things are uh, start to start happening in um, big bulk numbers, big bulk numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like that flood in um, Venezuela, you know, where those damn near 300 of people, 300 or so people damn near, you know, um, ended up getting swept away. You know, these earthquakes where the Lord is really, you know, um, I'm taking people out in great numbers. But you're going to it's going to get a lot worse than that. It's going the numbers are going to get a lot, a lot larger than that. You're going to start to see people, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 40, 50,000, 60,000. Hell, you know, 100, 200,000 people. You know what I'm saying? You just never know how the Lord going to get down on it, man. But he's going to turn up, though. So right now, our people have the opportunity to repent. And that's what you should be um, doing. Repent to the Father Yahweh in the name of His Son Yahweh Shai, because see shit like this right here, they gonna come with something else. And mainly, the um that that MOTB we call it the MOTB, I call it the mark of the beauty and the beast. You know that um, you know that neural link. They wanna they wanna implant you, man. And there are gonna be some people that's gonna you know, you know, hey shit, man, they're gonna get that business for refusing. And if we have to go that far, then we just have to do it. Because what did the Lord say? I'll get, um, let me get one more. And I'll end out here. It's like, Yahar That Revelation 2 and, um, 10. Because matter of fact, in, um, um, Matthew 24, it talks about how even, um, in that chapter where the Lord was giving a rundown, when the disciples was asking them what was going to be happening in the end days, he told them that, you know what I'm saying, some of us will be thrown into prison. You know? Now, this is Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So this is the mindset and attitude that we have to have. That no matter what. You know, the great reward is on the other side. We have to look beyond this place. But we, we're trusting in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We're trusting in the one that created everything that these people are even talking about. He created their conversation. <laughs> he created their brain, man. He created their eyes, ears, their damn lungs, hearts, you know, and everything that you can see around you. So why not trust on him? He's the one that's in control. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we're praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for that endurance, man, in these last days. Because this guy... He went from working out from six, five to six times a week, healthy as shit. Took that shit and had, <laughs> and he's out here looking like damn near looking like um um Stephen Hawkins, man, in that motherfucking wheelchair, looking crazy as hell. And I'm willing to bet you he wish he had never done that. But guess what? The Lord didn't give him that mindset. Because overall, I think he's a Edomite. He could, you know, Israelites look like him. You know, there's some Israelites out here that look like this guy. It's not a skin color thing. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? He didn't trust in Yahweh about Shemiah was shy. He trusted in himself, his own carnal abilities, and the Lord took that shit from him. So with that, I pray that this lesson was edifying. Kwame Allah and a Bible ball.